Sirloin tip roast is an extremely flavorful cut of meat and it's economical as well. However, if it's not cooked correctly, it tends to be a little bit tough. So let's turn this economical and flavorful cut of meat into a delicious pot roast. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today we're gonna make pot roast. Now, it's a pretty simple, straightforward type of meal. You can pressure cook, you can slow cook, you can oven braise. Today, we are going to slow cook. I found that I really loved the texture and the flavors that came out of slow cooking this sirloin tip roast. I have a four pound roast. We're gonna get it seared in the Ninja Foodi. Now, you can use any type of slow cooker that you like, so you don't have to have the Ninja Foodi uh, to do this. If you your slow cooker does not have the ability to sear, then you're gonna wanna do this on a pan on the stove, okay? But same principles. First thing we're gonna do is open up the lid here. I'm using the six and a half quart Ninja Foodi with the one lid. The two lid model's gonna work just fine, so no changes there. It'll default to sear saute because the lid's open. We're gonna hit start. It's on high, that's what we want. We're gonna let the pot heat up for a few minutes, then add in some olive oil. Meanwhile, let's get our seasoning blend onto the uh, sirloin roast. Now, I, brought this out of the refrigerator about an hour ago, and I encourage you to do that when you're making large cuts of meat, especially when you're gonna sear them, and then you're gonna slow cook or pressure cook. Bringing them to a little bit closer to room temperature is just going to help everything cook evenly through. All right, so the spice blend that I'm using, you can use whatever you like. Simple salt and pepper would be delicious. Just remember when you're seasoning the roast, you're flavoring the gravy. So we're gonna go a little bit heavier on this than you might if you were just seasoning a steak, okay? What I have is two teaspoons of fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half of a teaspoon of thyme leaves, and a half of a teaspoon of rosemary leaves. All right, so let's mix those all up in the bowl here. And then apply it to all sides of the meat liberally, okay? We've got a good couple tablespoons of rub here. Then what I like to do is actually rub it right in. So you can see I'm keeping a clean hand and a dirty hand. All right, let's flip it over. All sides, right? All sides. We're gonna get it completely coated in this delicious rub. All right, that looks good. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add in about two tablespoons of olive oil. You could use whatever type of oil that you like and we're gonna let that heat up for a few minutes, and then we will get our roast in to sear on all sides. Then we're gonna bring it back out, and we're gonna create the base for our gravy. We're gonna let it sear on each side for about two to three minutes. You'll know when it's ready to flip to another side when it releases easily from the pot or the frying pan if you're doing it on the stove. So if it starts to stick, it's not ready to release. Just keep it on the saute mode and keep it searing until it releases easily. Now, while that's happening, let's talk about some of the other ingredients that I'm gonna add in next. I have four tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of flour, and three to four tablespoons of tomato paste. Let me talk about the tomato paste a little bit because it is optional. And the first time I tested the recipe, I used a, a small can, six ounces, which is about five to six tablespoons or so. Jeff and I both thought it was a little tomatoey, and so we've cut that down some in the recipe, but if you like a really tomatoey type of sauce of, of gravy for your pot roast, use the whole six ounces. It worked out beautifully. It tasted delicious. It was just a little on the tomato side for us. So we've cut that down. But you could use three or four tablespoons or you could use six ounces, it doesn't matter. Or you can omit it if you don't want any tomato flavor. That's perfectly fine as well.
All right, once it's seared on all sides, go ahead and add in your butter. You can see we've got a lot of drippings here on the bottom. We are definitely gonna loosen those up and incorporate them with the butter. This makes for a delicious gravy. Now, if your butter's getting too brown too quickly, lower your heat. I'm okay right now, so I'm gonna keep it on the high sear saute. Those pieces that you see in the pot that are kind of clinging to the butter, those are part of the rub. I probably released the meat a little bit too soon, and so some of the crust came off. It's gonna be fine though, I'm not worried about it. All right, let's get in our flour. This is four tablespoons of flour. What we're doing now is making a roux. That's gonna be the base of our gravy. So you wanna cook this for about two minutes just to cook the flour flavor out. And I'm scraping the bottom of the pot just to make sure that nothing is sticking so that I know nothing will burn. This is the main difference between slow cooking and pressure cooking. Pressure cooking, we would not be able to do the roux in the bottom of the pot because it would create too much of a thick liquid and it would impede our ability to pressure cook. But since we are doing a slow cook, we can do this. Now I'm adding in the tomato paste. I like to saute the tomato paste just for about a minute before I add the beef stock. I feel like cooking it a little bit before we go into the slow cook helps develop the flavors, but it's totally optional. You don't have to do it. Of course, if you're not using tomato paste, you would right now be adding in your beef stock, which is two cups. And I'm using beef broth. There is a difference between beef broth and beef stock. But I'm using a pretty basic, um, you know, Sam's Club brand of a beef broth. So it's not super flavorful. So you can get away with pretty much anything you wanna use. If you're gonna use bouillon instead, cut the salt down in the rub. They tend to be a little bit saltier. Now we're gonna add in the two cups of beef broth or stock or bone broth. That's gonna add even more flavor to our pot roast if you have it handy. And then just stir it until this becomes a smooth liquid. Scrape down the sides of the pot. We're also gonna add in a little bit of red wine vinegar. Now, if you wanted to use wine, you could certainly use red wine. That's perfectly fine. But I like to add the little bit of vinegar, which is only two tablespoons. I like the tang of the sauce that way, the gravy. I just think it's delicious. I also think it helps to break down the meat fibers a little bit. It you know, brings a little acidity. Uh, and I really think that it helps tenderize the beef, but you don't have to use it. it it's totally optional. Two tablespoons going in. When I first tested the recipe, I did a quarter of a cup. If you like a tang, go with a quarter cup and go with the full six ounces of tomato paste. It was delicious. I just thought for most people it might be a little too much, so we backed it down in the recipe. And then I have two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And that just adds like a depth of flavor, uh, just, oh my gosh, it just makes it so delicious. Some people add soy sauce, but I'm a fan of the W sauce, as they call it. Okay, so I'm just getting this to be smooth. Now, one thing about slow cooking, when you're cooking in a thicker type of gravy, is it can take a little bit longer for things to get done. So we're gonna go on high slow cook, which is what I recommend. And the timing for me has been six hours. That has cooked and tenderized the roast and cooked the vegetables to my liking, okay? I like my carrots to be a little on the firmer side. If you want your carrots softer, you're gonna go eight hours, okay? Or you could cut them into smaller pieces, but literally, I just take carrots and peel them. I have about a pound and a half of carrots. You could use as many or as few as you want or will fit in your pot. That's the big determining factor of how many ingredients you can put in um, in addition to your roast is how big your pot is, right? So that makes a big difference. All right, I'm using the six and a half quart. First thing I like to put in are the onions. I don't mind if they get too soft and they like elevate the beef a little bit off the bottom so that we don't have any issues with the beef like sticking to the bottom of the pot. 
So I'm gonna put those in. That's two sweet onions that I just literally quartered, basically, okay? Then we're gonna get our beef back in. Set that on top here. And I have it on the high sear saute this whole time. You can turn it off if you want, or you can um, leave it on. It's perfectly fine. All right, now, next thing we're gonna put in are our mushrooms. So I have eight ounces of mushrooms that I just took the stems out. You can leave the stems in. You can just trim them if you want. We're gonna just put those in whole. You can quarter them, but I like them whole. I like this to be kind of chunky. Then we're gonna nestle in our carrots, which I leave whole and I just sort of put them around the sides of the pot. Then we're gonna get on our potatoes. Now, one thing I'm gonna say about this size, okay, six and a half quart, is I'll put the potatoes on top, but about two to three hours into cooking, or even four hours into cooking, I will make sure those potatoes get down in the liquid. So what's gonna happen as we slow cook, we're essentially braising the roast, so the roast is gonna release juices. So the little bit of thicker gravy that we have at the bottom is going to thin out some, and then that's gonna help cook all of our vegetables through. It is important when you're slow cooking and you want your vegetables to cook at the same time that your liquid is not too thick, okay? Okay. I have two pounds of little company potatoes here. I find that they cook really nicely in the slow cooker and they are not too mushy on the inside, but you could use russets and, you know, cut them into like two inch pieces or something, or you could use Yukon gold. You could use whatever you have. Now I'm not going to overload this too much. This was two pounds. I think I'm only going to add about one and a half pounds. You see, we're getting kind of high up here and I wanna make sure we have room. So that's all I'm going to put in, about one and a half pounds. All right, nestle that in, close your lid. Now we're gonna go, we have to turn it off or start stop again. And then we're gonna select the slow cook mode and high is what we want, six hours is what we want and hit start. Doesn't matter where your valve is if you're using the one lid model, but if you're using the two lid Ninja Foodi, or an Instant Pot, you want it to be vented, okay? We want some steam to come out. We're not pressure cooking this. All right, that's it, guys. So now in about three hours, I'll come in, I'll check it, push down some of those vegetables if they need to be pushed down into the liquid so they cook evenly, and then we'll let it go for a total of six hours, and I will show you how delicious and tender this sirloin tip roast gets. I was just about to clean up and I was like, whoops, I forgot an ingredient, the garlic. This is totally optional, but what I like to do is put a whole bulb of garlic that I have peeled and then just smashed lightly, okay? Keeping the garlic cloves whole will impart a nice, subtle garlic flavor without being too overwhelming. And this bulb only had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven cloves of garlic. That doesn't really matter. If you're a garlic lover, you can add more if you want. Now, normally I would add these garlic cloves down towards the bottom when I first make the sauce because I want them to really cook. So I'm just gonna push them down here make sure that they get into that sauce because they provide a lot of flavor. All right, looks good. Now we can close this up and just resume our slow cook. So we don't have to do any more settings. It, opening the lid and checking on things mid cycle of a slow cook on the Ninja Foodi is perfectly fine. So we are ready to go and in three hours we will push some of those vegetables down. I'll show you how things are coming along. It's been three hours on slow cook on high, and now I'm gonna go ahead and check on it and move some things around. Now this is where people get kind of freaked out with using the Ninja Foodi as a slow cooker, because if you look at this, it looks like nothing's even cooking. I mean, really. But do not worry, because it will cook, I promise you. So I'm gonna go down in here and show you the temperature of the liquid is almost up to 200 degrees. So that is good for slow cooking. That's what we want. But these potatoes are only getting cooked by the steam and it's probably not hot enough to really cook them through. So I like to get them down in to the juices now, which we have a lot more than we did when we started because the roast itself is putting off some juices. So I'll push it down as much as I can and maybe even grab the roast up a little bit. I know people are gonna say, so what happens if I'm gone all day? 
right? I'm not there midway through. Well, don't worry. Just put your vegetables on the bottom instead of on the top like I did. It's gonna keep your roast out of the liquid a little bit more, but it'll be fine and, it, and these vegetables will cook. We can also at this point, what I like to do is kind of flip the roast over a little bit so that we have it even in the amount of liquid. So see how now all the vegetables pretty much have fallen underneath the liquid or really close to the liquid. Now the roast is up a little bit, that's gonna be fine. All right, let's take a temperature of the meat. We are nowhere near done, but I like to show you guys what the temperature is right now. So we are running at about 145. Now, the temperature that you want for a really nice tender roast is gonna be about 205 degrees internally. This is not something we're serving medium rare. This is fully cooked, and we wanna get it past fully cooked up into the 200 degree range so that it's really tender. So that's all there is to do now. We just close the lid back up. And again, if you're not home, don't worry about it. Put your vegetables on the bottom, put your beef on top. The beef will start to sink as the uh, liquid starts to fill up around it and you're gonna be fine. We just finished six hours of slow cooking on high. Now let's check and see how everything is cooked. It looks pretty beautiful. It's definitely different from earlier, right? So we've got even some browning on our meat here and oh my gosh, it looks really good. Now the sauce is a little bit thin. It's thinner than, well, I, I call it sauce gravy, whatever you wanna call it. It's a little thinner than the last time. That's gonna vary, but guess what? I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So no worries there. All right, let's see, are we there? Remember, we wanted to get up above 200. We are just 201, 202, we're good. All right, same thing with carrots. Carrots should be about 195 to 200, and they are 202, so they're perfectly cooked. And our potatoes here, 200 degrees is usually good, and they're 198, so I would say we are good to go. All right, let me grab a platter. I'm gonna pull all of this out and then talk about how you can thicken your gravy. All right, let's get this meat out first. Ooh, it's a little heavy. Wow, that is a chunk of meat there. All right, so I got everything on the plate here that I could fit anyway. I have my plates a little small, so I added the bowl. Now, look at the consistency of the gravy. It is on the thinner side. Last time I made this, it was thicker. That just means that my roast this time gave off more liquid. So there's a couple things you can do in the very beginning of slow cooking. You could decrease your liquid, your beef broth to one cup if you wanted to. However, what I worry about there is that during the cooking time, your liquid is gonna be too thick and it's not going to cook in the six hours. So if you do start off with less liquid, you're gonna have a thicker braising liquid, so to speak. Go eight hours, okay, so that everything is cooked perfectly like we have here. Now, I can also thicken this after the fact. Now, personally, I don't really care if the gravy's super thick, so this doesn't bother me at all. But for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and thicken it a little bit. You can do it two ways. You could do a cornstarch slurry or a flour slurry. Since we started with a flour and butter roux, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little flour slurry. All right, so to thicken our gravy, I'm gonna set this down here. You wanna get a canning jar or some sort of a container that has a lid that you can put on. I have about a half of a cup of beef broth. This is cold right out of the refrigerator. I understand that that works better. In one of my previous pot roast videos, I actually thickened with the hot liquid and it clumped the flour a little bit more. So some people were kind enough to let me know, because I'm not a gravy maker, honestly. I don't even really like it that much, so I don't make it that often. Uh, and I'm not a good one, so they let me know if you put the flour in with the cold uh, broth, it's going to mix better. So two tablespoons of flour, which is gonna be plenty for the amount of liquid that we have in our pot to thicken it. Now, one thing about flour is it's not very good if it's not cooked, so we're gonna go ahead and stop this keep warm and we're gonna let it default back to sear saute and hit start. 
So while that's heating up, we're just gonna do a little shake. Now I didn't sift the flour or anything and it's just regular all-purpose flour. Some people like to use Wondra, uh, but I don't find that this, there's any issues with this. Okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna pour this in and let it thicken as it cooks. So just bring this to a boil and I would probably boil it for about five minutes and then it should be nice and thick and ready to taste for seasonings. Now that we added a little extra flour, you might need to add some extra salt, pepper, or some other seasonings that you like. All right, so if I did this correctly, then it should be very tender. You could slice it, but you could also shred it, okay? So, oh yes, look at that. Now, I can see the grain is going this way, so honestly, I would recommend cutting it from this end. So always check to see where the grain is going and then cut it against the grain. It's going to make it super tender for you. Looks good. And then I will just grab a potato. I don't need a whole carrot. Just grab a half of a carrot here. And of course, one of these delicious mushrooms and an onion. All right, there we go. Now, if you wanted to, you can garnish your whole dish, sort of like I did uh, before I took a picture with some uh, fresh parsley, or don't worry about it, it's fine. All right. Well, it's already thickening up nicely. In fact, it's thick enough for me. Let's get a little bowl and taste it here for seasonings, see what it needs. Mm. I don't know, that's pretty good. I don't think it needs anything. I think we're good to go. A little bit over the meat here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Now you might like it thicker, let it cook a little bit longer. It'll thicken up or you could put in three or four tablespoons of flour if you wanted or switch over to a cornstarch slurry. That would be fine too. Just make it a little bit glossier of a finish. All right, so if the pot roast or sirloin tip roast in this case is cooked correctly, you should not need a knife and I did not need a knife. All right, moment of truth. Oh my gosh, is it tender? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. That is delicious. Now I think the meat could use a little bit of salt to be honest with you, but that's just me. Just put a little salt there. Oh yeah. Mmm. The carrots are perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, I'm gonna turn that off now because it's boiled and it can just sit there for a minute. All right, mushroom, they are so delicious. They hold their texture so well. Oh, and they absorb all that flavor. Oh my gosh. Okay, potato, perfectly cooked, guys. Okay, this one's a winner. Everything is perfectly cooked. Six hours on high in the Ninja Foodie, and it worked out beautifully. So those of you who think that the slow cooker doesn't work on the Ninja Foodie, think again. I just showed you it works, and it works perfectly. Enjoy.